I never imagined the Queen dying. In my mind, I thought she'd be around forever. You know, like when you're young and you think about your parents, you never think about losing one, losing a loved one. I guess it's because she's always been there, the country's mother, grandmother, bringing stability to the nation. I take this video just after the Queen passed away, reflecting on the 11 years I cooked for her in the royal kitchens, breakfast, lunch, afternoon, tea and dinner, and the many interactions I had with her over those years. It's a bit sombre, no cooking in this video. Just remembering an incredible lady that devoted her life to duty. And I know she touched so many other people's lives too. I wanted to share this with you. I'd always been fascinated with Buckingham Palace. I remember as a little boy, my parents taking me, my brother and sister to London sightseeing and we stopped at Buckingham Palace and I remember looking inside and seeing how big it was and it never really entered my head then that, you know, some years and years later I'd be rattling pans there in the royal kitchens and, and cooking for the Queen and all the guests and I guess that's how time flies. Fast forward over 10 years and uh, my mother, a big fan of the royal family, called and said, Prince Charles... Princess Diana are getting married and we've got to go to the royal wedding and let's sleep on the mall outside Buckingham Palace and and we did and it was while we were there for hours and hours I kept looking over at the palace thinking it must be really really cool to be in those kitchens right now preparing a royal wedding breakfast and when I got home I wrote a letter to the Queen <laughs> I I said, I want to be a royal chef. I want to work in your kitchens. I want to come and cook for you. I'm not sure if she read the letter. I don't, I don't think she did. <laughs> she didn't. But um, someone did. And not long after that, I got an interview at the palace. And I guess not much longer after that, there I was working in the royal kitchens at Buckingham Palace. There I was, a royal chef. I was so excited my first day. I thought I'd get to cook for the Queen at Buckingham Palace, but she was 800 miles away at Balmoral Castle, where she goes, uh, at, where she went every year for, for, for the summer, pretty much. She'd be there for about three months, and um, Balmoral was her jewel in the Scottish Highlands. She just loved the place, and I think, I could see why. When I finally got there, I, um, I could see why she loved Balmoral. It was a few weeks before I got summoned to Balmoral Castle and where I got to actually meet the Queen and the, and the royal family. I say meet the Queen, but I never really actually got to meet her that day. I remember cooking lunch and then going for a walk in the afternoon, walking down by the River Dee and looking on in the direction I could see the Queen with the corgis coming towards me. I was so excited and I thought, oh, remember you've got to say Your Majesty, uh, good afternoon Your Majesty uh, and then it was ma'am after that and as they got closer, <laughs> as they got closer the Queen's corgis saw me and they started barking. Twelve corgis the Queen had at the time. Barking, and then they just started running at me, running after me. Well, the Queen just burst out laughing. That's what I could hear most, the Queen laughing. She thought it was so funny, this chef turning and just running away from those corgis. But Balmoral was unbelievable. It was so peaceful and tranquil, and... There's no wonder the Queen wanted to spend her last days there. I think that she, whenever she went to Balmoral, she would drive in through the gates and take off the crown, the tiara, hang it on those gates and say, right then, for the next few weeks, months, I'm going to be a mother, I'm going to be a grandmother, I'm going to have time with my family. And, you know, whether it was just kicking off the heels and putting on the Wellington boots and the barber and the headscarf and just walking off into the hills and, and 
with the corgis. She loved going out walking the corgis. She loved going uh, horse riding. She loved just jumping in the car and just driving off Balmoral's 50,000 acre estate. And I think, you know, seeing her there, whether it was walking the dogs, whether it was riding, whether it was um, walking along with Prince William as a young boy on his little Shetland pony, Smokey, and the Queen leading the way with a big beaming smile on her face. I think, happy memories. I cook for kings, queens, presidents, President Reagan, Clinton, Ford, both Presidents Bush, um, while I was with the Queen, and state banquets were incredible. The Queen just held everything together in London, and it was military precision, but at Balmoral, it was just different. It just seemed weird uh, packing up some sandwiches and uh, some fruit, a uh, little piece of cake, fruit cake, and putting it into a Tupperware container. And then the Queen would just ride off into the hills to one of the lodges on the estate where she could just sit there and just relax and, and be away from everything. And barbecues as well at Balmoral, in the hills. Just the family, that's all. Prince Philip cooking and the rest of the family helping, but, um, you know, making the salad and things like that. And the Queen never actually got into the cooking, but she, she wanted to help. She wanted to do her part. And I think that, you know, seeing her um, at the end of the meal, just rinsing the dishes to put back in the crate to come back to the castle. We always had to wash the dishes again afterwards, but the Queen was doing her part. I've seen the Queen riding down the mall, trooping the colour, but imagine bumping into her at Balmoral in the fruit cages. Uh, I was walking past one afternoon and I could hear someone in the fruit cages where we had the most amazing raspberries, strawberries, frais de bois, and red currants, black currants. It was beautiful. They were so good. But I thought, oh my gosh, somebody is stealing the Queen's fruit. And so I crept in quietly, opened the gate, and then went into the cages. To my surprise, I bumped into the Queen and Princess Margaret in there. And they had little containers. They were picking berries. And she saw me and she said, would you make some jam with these, please? <laughs> Who would have imagined? I mean, that was the Queen relaxing at Balmoral. Coming down to... Coming down to the, the servants' hall, coming down to the, the, staff, uh, the staff dance where uh, on a night where we'd all done dinner and we decided we wanted a fancy dress party. Everyone was dressing up, all the staff were dressing up in different costumes. And the Queen came down and actually judged the competition. She loved it. She loved watching the parade, seeing seeing the palace steward dressed up as a gamekeeper and, and a chauffeur dressed as, as, as something from Phantom of the Opera. And Gilly's Ball, every year the Queen hosted a ball, a gamekeeper's ball at Balmoral for all the staff. And we get to dance with, with, with the royal family. I remember dancing with the Queen. It was a dashing white sergeant. The, I, I was with two housemaids and one either side and uh, the Queen uh, was with uh, Prince Charles and Prince Philip and they just came dancing towards us and we danced together. <sighs> Memories. I think one of the highlights of uh, the Western Isles cruise uh, was, um, was once we sort of crossed the top of Scotland and then we came down the other side and we pulled into Scrabster Harbour and um, the Queen would go and have afternoon tea at the Castle of May with the Queen Mother uh, on the Sunday afternoon. And then when we sailed out again down towards Aberdeen for the Queen to go off to Balmoral, uh, we'd, uh, we'd see the Castle of May and we'd see the Queen Mother and they'd all be waving sheets and waving and Britannia would let off flares and the Queen would be there with her camera snapping away. Uh, and just just waving away. I mean, you see that. You see, you see happy times when the Queen was really, really happy. I love Sandringham too, where we go for Christmas and New Year with the Queen, and seeing her again relaxing with the family, wearing a party hat um, at Christmas lunch, and uh, just before Christmas, she'd she'd 
wish all of our staff one by one, shake hands with them and wish them all individually a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I remember coming into the kitchen at Sandringham I was making pancakes, crepes, and I had six pans on the stove and I was just flipping these pancakes over with a spatula. And the Queen came over and stood there and I thought, oh my gosh, this is a royal command performance. And I thought she's going to be really impressed, six pans there, me flipping these over. And she, she suddenly said, uh, isn't that cheating? I said, I'm sorry, Your Majesty. She said, uh, aren't you supposed to toss them, to flip them? And I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to end up on the ceiling, on the floor, and this is going to be embarrassing. But I did. I flipped the first one and the second, and then all of them, and they all tossed and flipped perfect. And then the Queen just said, oh, bravo, gave a little clap, and then walked off. Big smile on her face. Just happy memories, and... It was always fun when she came to the kitchen. She didn't always come to the kitchen. I mean, if it was a choice, if she had a spare 30 minutes or something, it was, okay, I'm going to walk the dogs. I'm going to go and feed the horse. I don't think it was ever, oh, let me go and see the chefs in the kitchen. <laughs> but I do remember coming into the kitchen at Wood Farm. Uh, she was up there at Sandringham doing dog trials. And uh, it was on the Monday morning. I'd been cooking for her all weekend. She came in the kitchen and just... A uh, big smile on her face and she said, thank you for a lovely weekend. The food has been incredible. She just had this way of making you feel like you were the only person there in the world. You know, just, it just meant so much. You know, forget the medals and money or anything else. It's the Queen just saying thank you. I think, you know, that was just something special. Favourite memories of the Queen? So many over the 11 years. You know, just making a birthday cake every year. Two, of her official birthday and her actual birthday. But she had the same chocolate birthday cake recipe every birthday. And for the 11 years that I was there, and even longer too, the, um, the chocolate cake recipe that she had dated back to Gabriella Shumi, who was Queen Victoria's chef. It was a family recipe, but she always had that same chocolate cake recipe. She'd have a little slice and then she wanted it sent back downstairs so that the staff could enjoy it too. And we would cut it into little slices and send it into the staff dining room. But that was the Queen. She was caring about her staff, about other people. I think what I'll remember most about the Queen is her dedication to duty, you know, her self-sacrifice and the stability that she brought to the country. Uh, she was just an incredible lady. She's going to be missed. And I think it's just so sad that, um, you know, she's been there for 70 years. <sighs> Rest in peace, Your Majesty. And as Paddington Bear said, thank you for your service.